Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show dedicated to sitting down with local elected leaders from communities all across Canada. Our goal is to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. My name is Christopher Brown, your host for this exciting journey. This episode of the Cross Border Interviews was recorded live at the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association Conference in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in April. Today's guest is Moose Jaw Councillor Don Looning. Um, I want to start with the very first question, which is, where did your sense of duty to serve your municipality come from? Well, it, um, so I, I got hired to do a community fundraising project in the city of Moose Jaw in, I want to say... 2000, 2001, I can't remember exactly when, um, to raise money for the cultural center that we built at that time for the fundraising, the community fundraising side. And um, did really well with that. And I mean, I'm from Moose Jaw, was okay. born in Regina, moved to Moose Jaw very young because my dad bought a business there, but had gone to school there, you know, high school there, everything, went to university here in Saskatoon, actually, and then came back to Moose Jaw. And because we were, I was getting in the paper with the, you know, the checks of sponsors giving money to that, to the cultural center, the election was coming up for, um, you know, it, it was that time for municipal elections or whatever. And my husband now um, said to me then, and another friend of his said, you should run for city council because people know who you are and municipal politics is who you is really is about it's not per, it's not parti per, what's the word <laughs> tripping over the word it's partisan right partisan, or partisan. Yeah. thank you partisan oh my god not parmesan cheese right oh my god anyways and so um, they just said you should run for council and i was fortunate that very first election in 2003 i topped the polls and I've been lucky enough to be there ever since. Five terms in. and So let's unpack that a little bit here. Yeah. I want to go back to a little old. I apologize. I was going to call you. An old counselor? That's okay. Yeah, no. Because <laughs> I am. Um, I want to go back to young Don. Yeah. Was politics discussed at the dinner table no. growing up? No. Really? It wasn't actually, to be honest with you. You didn't talk politics, right? Like, okay. You know, you, I, I was always taught that you didn't tell people who you voted for, right? You know, like whoever you, my mom and dad voted for. I, I mean, I knew who they voted for, I think, but they never talked about it, right? It Did, wasn't a big deal. Was was politics even something that you were interested no, in? No, it wasn't. I was more interested in the community, to okay. be honest, right? Like I was, I was so, I was interested in um, the cultural center at that time, right? And what the good it could do for the arts community in Moose Jaw that I thought, how hard can it be? And I've been like that all my life. Like when I took on the presidency of our Senior Ladies Fastball League years before that, I did the same thing. How hard can it be, right? You know, not knowing that it can, this can be very hard. <laughs> so let's talk about the 23, 2003 election yeah. here for a second. I know it's a, uh, almost 20 years ago, but I want to ask this pointed question. There's a lot of times in a lot of elections that you deal with a lot of different issues. And there are, there are either macro issues or micro issues. Right. Local issues like potholes, playgrounds, yep. community centers. The major ones, yep. Or healthcare, mm -hmm. education. Do you remember what the issues were in that election? And do you remember if they were more macro or more micro? They were micro, I think, in that election. Have that stayed, has that stayed consistent? In no. Okay. No, it hasn't. Because the city of Musha had a very divisive decision with our new now the Moose Jaw Events Center, yeah. right? That was very, that was a macro issue, right? But that didn't happen in 2003. That was 06, 09, right? And those elections passed that, right? Do you find that more people will come out for macro issues than Absolutely. micro? Why yeah. do you think that is? Mm, well, should I say, yeah, I think, I think more people run for elected office okay. on macro issues, yeah. right? I don't think people run because they want their garbage changed to the front street rather than the back alley, if you know what I mean, right? You know, they, they have a passion about... You sound like my neighbor in Calgary. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they have a passion for, and again, using Moose Jaw as an example, because that's why I'm here. That, the, it was called a multiplex, yeah. right, at the time. It should be built downtown, and if it isn't built downtown, I am really not going to be happy with this. And there were people that ran on that, right, and got elected mm -hmm. because they had their support to try and push that, 
you know, and that's how politics works, right? Is there's influence that pushes a candidate to a seat, good and bad situations, in in my opinion, right? Because I, now I'm really kind of, I'm all over the map, but I really have tried to come from a place of... How do you balance? Yeah, non-biased. I've always tried to be non-biased because I feel there's candidates that are in municipal politics, and I hope I don't say the wrong thing, but that have one agenda or two agendas. And I have no idea what you're talking right? about, Counselor. Right? That is not the truth. What are right? you talking about? That is yeah. totally so far Sorry. left field. Sorry. I just, I just sometimes, I, I, you know, I, you know, over the years there's been, conflict of interest is a big deal to me, right? Like, and, and it, it, it to, in my opinion, it's happened recently with our council. It, now it's happened in prior councils that I don't think people understand that a conflict of interest, certainly it means the de- definition of it is that you're monetarily uh, benefiting from that yeah. decision. You or your family. Correct, <laughs> right? But a long time ago, somebody said to me, um, in, in this business of municipal politics, if you even for one minute think it's a conflict, you need to step out of the room. Yeah. And I think sitting in a position of counselor, MLA, cabinet minister, MP, whatever it might be, if, you, if you're using that position to influence a decision that's there because you have something else going on, right? You're a, you're a board member for a group in Moose Jaw or you're, you know, something like that, and you're sitting as an elected official and there's a topic that comes to the table that, could, that you could use that influence because you're on that board, that to me is a conflict of interest, yeah. and 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 I just don't th- I don't understand, and, and it's not I don't know why I, we, to me. Do you think bit- good governance goes hand in hand with conflict? Like, does the um, I, I don't know all your policies offhand. Yeah. I'm assuming the city of Moose Jaw has a policy of code of conduct. Absolutely, for its we all do. It, yes. In fact, it was mandated by the province. Okay, we I all did. had to have a code. Okay, because I know that uh, Newfoundland Labrador just went through that. Ontario's right. kind of going through that right now. Right. Do you think that leads to better candidates and better to have like to counselors? Have, to have yeah, coordinator? I don't know if it does or not, right? Okay. I mean, ultimately, I think ultimately people are good, good yeah. people, right? People come to the to the political table with good in mind. They they love their community. They want things to be better. They do have something in mind that they don't like. So I'm going to run for elected office and try and fix that, right? But I do think that sometimes it can, the longer, I, I don't know. I, I, Is it always good to refresh? Absolutely, I think. Yeah. How often do you do it? Like, because I'm assuming, it, because you've been in uh, government for 20 years right. now. Right, You probably know that policy. When it gets updated, you know what, yeah. what the changes are. Yeah. Oh, be. I thought you were talking about me as a sitting councillor, right? You, you know, do you think, how often is it good to refresh your councils, right? No, no, <laughs> because no. Because funny you should ask that question, because my husband has said that when he, when he looks at federal politics, right, they, you have a shelf life yeah. as, a, as an elected official, right? You're there for a certain amount of time, and after a while, you maybe get a little long in the tooth, right? You know, where you've been there long enough, it's time to refresh. It's time to change the people, right? I've tried to hopefully adapt to the change to kind of keep going, right? But I know what you're Are saying you about policy. Are you enjoying it, though? I love it. I love really? it. Really? What's the yeah. best part about it? Um, the people. The people. I love I do love the people and I love the passion that people bring to their community, right? And what they and what they think is good and bad about it. Right. Okay. So it goes back to the question that we started off the conversation with is about apathy and are people getting involved when they're more macro or micro issues? Right. You're just saying that people are the best part about the job. Are people engaged in the city of Moose Jaw? Yes. Well, yeah, I think so. Or is it well, a vocal group of people? You know what? Because with the rise of social media, yeah. that's probably been the biggest crux when it comes to municipal pol- politics and government is we listen to the the, the Twitters, the Facebooks, yeah. and we're not actually engaging with the outside, the people who actually right. have day-to-day lives. Right. The last, I'll say that to Yeah, anyone. the last election cycle... Um, I didn't I didn't want to use social media as much as I did the prior ones because yeah. I wanted to try and talk to people like actually physically do what you and I are doing instead of talking to people through social media. The last couple of elections that's how I kind of got my name out there, right? You know. But this last one I I I wanted to 
try and talk to people a little bit more, right? But I don't know if people are more engaged in any kind of politics. I mean, the proof is in the pudding with the voter turnout in a lot of things, right? I is don't it know bad if, in Moose Jaw? Yeah, it was about under, it was around 20% the last time. Like it's it In was a regular low. election? Yeah, Not it was a, really whoa. low. It was really low. We had our election two weeks after the provincial election and there's a li- and it was deep, it was right around the Remembrance Day weekend. There's a little bit of an argument that the timing was off. We also had a really huge snowstorm in Saskatchewan, just like what we're supposed to be getting in these next couple of days. Don't right? say that Where, because I'm I know, leaving. Right? I know, right? <laughs> I want to be home too on Wednesday. Um, so I don't know if I don't know what it was. If it was the snowstorm, if it's apathy towards politics. I mean, we kind of see it all over at the provincial level, the federal level. People are kind of, you know, you get this feeling that people are kind of tired of politicians, right? So I don't know. So how do you do your job correctly if people are tired of politicians? Because you are elected to represent everyone in your community. You were there to represent the people who have elected you and the people who didn't elect you as well. Right. How do you engage with your community with saying people are tired of politicians? Because I can imagine you want to make the best decision every single time you make a vote in council chambers. But if you decide... I'm going to go try and engage with people and no one gives you your feedback and then you make a vote and then everyone gets angry at you. Mm -hmm. It's a contradiction of trying to get people engaged while trying to do your job because they don't want to give you their feedback until they're angry about it. Yeah, yeah. I I think, but I think that's happening a lot lately. Like I think we in, in our society right now are reactive to a lot of things, right? What? What? Right? You know, like we're, you know, we, we don't really see or hear from people unless they're angry about something, right? You know, we just kind of go about our day to day. We haven't had a macro issue in Moose Jaw for a while and I'm kind of waiting for it to happen, right? You know, before the next election. <laughs> That's usually when they crop up. Right? They got another year and a half. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, so, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what, what to say really about that. But. What does good governance mean to you? Good governments to me means, um, oh, geez, <laughs> isn't that terrible? After after all this time, what's the what's the right answer to that? I, it, I think it goes back. For me, it's about service above self. For me, it really is about that. I think that if I, like if I can look at myself in the mirror in the morning, like I believe. I might believe something completely different that you think would be good for the city of Moose Jaw, right? But I, and I've never had a problem arguing my point with you and trying to get, I'm also open to hearing your side to see if maybe, because I have changed my mind before the vote has come up, right? Yeah. And it's, and it's been like, okay, I never thought of it that way. And that's a really good point, right? So to me, good governance is coming from a, from a neutral place um, where you really see you kind of look at your community as a whole and say, what's going to be best for Musha as a whole, right? You know, for us to grow, create jobs, all that stuff that we're trying to do in municipal politics, right? Bring residents, home, build homes, right? Businesses. Going back to your original statement about duty to serve, municipal governance, municipal politics isn't partisan. No. You have to sit down across the table, and there's probably people who are completely, complete opposites yep. of you on that table. How much respect comes into play for you to be open to hearing from all sides, whether they be liberal, conservative, NDP, green, or whatever party in between, but at the end of the day, the councillors around your table make up the best decision for right. the city? Right. Yeah. Well, you, you just set that aside. I don't even think about that when I'm at when, when I'm in city council chambers in Moose Jaw, I don't look at councillor whomever and say, oh, I you're know, the, I you're know, the bleeding right, heart yeah, liberal. Right, oh. yeah, yeah. I don't like, I don't see them like that. I don't see them like that at all. Right. You know, I just see them as we're equals there as, as, as councillors and the mayor, right. Yep. We all have one vote and, you know, and that, and f- actually for me, that's been the biggest learning experience for me. I'm a private business owner and the things we do and the decisions that we the time it takes sometimes in municipal politics to get to a decision is sometimes hard for me as a private business person because it takes a, it's a long time sometimes to get through the bureaucratic red tape and to get I mean you know for me to make a, a decision in my business it happens like yesterday right and you move on right so so I just sat down with Bob Hawkins from oh, Regina yeah, yep. and I asked them this question so I'm going to get you to get answer this question and then we'll I'll ask the last question here and that is um, 
Oh my God, I, it literally was on the top of my head. What were you just saying? Uh, oh, educational. You've been around uh, government for some time. There's a lot of new councillors right now. Yeah. There's a lot of new mayors in this province, right. in this country. Yeah. BC, Ontario, Manitoba just went through big changes. Right. What advice would you give a first-term councillor in their first year in office that you wish you got in your first year of office? Uh. You talk about the pace of change, about the how in business it changes. You have to be able yeah. to adapt, but in government it takes some time. What would be your biggest advice to? Well, uh, I, th- I I think it would be back to what we were just saying is that you know that you are you are one vote. It takes a little bit of time to go through all the policy, go through all the bylaws, go through all the administrative red tape, the bureaucratic red tape. Decisions are because people come into and run because they think they're going to come in and change the city in one month. <laughs> So that's the biggest piece of advice I can give new people is it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. It doesn't. It's a process. It doesn't right? happen and over a year. <laughs> right? Well, that's just it, right? So something that you think you're going to, you win your council seat, I'm good to go. I'm going to fix that garbage issue or I'm going to fix that parks issue that I have. It doesn't happen like that because that was the biggest kind of thing for me because there were things around the city that obviously I thought, you know, yeah, we could fix that. We could do this differently. And I came in there thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the other three councillors across the way maybe knew more than I did and knew how it worked. And they said, it's not going to work like that, Councillor Looning, right? So then you're kind of kiboshed and not kiboshed, that's not the right word, but you you don't win that one, right? And so, you know, you're not going to win every vote. You're not going to, you know, you, things aren't going to go your way all the time, right? So that's the biggest piece of advice that I could give to somebody coming in new. Because I do think a lot of people run on one or two or three issues. They win their seat, they're in, and they think it's going to change right away. And and I Can you tell those councillors when they get the Bambi yeah. eyes when the yep, first few yep. hours of oh, council yeah, meetings? Right, right, especially when we have our first budget meetings and they get the books that are this thick, right? And then they realize, oh, wow, it isn't about that park issue that I had. It's about a bigger... Cause it's that's about what 19 it, other parks. Right, because that's what it was for me. Huge learning curve. Huge learning curve, right? So much money to deal with and, and uh, just the situations and the issues issues and the and all the little problems and situations around the city that you're like oh this because then it wasn't until about the 10 year 12 13 year mark that it was like I had a little light bulb go off in my head where I could see how one domino over here affected this over here there's so many issues that you've got to put together right last question and this is the, this is the big ending question what makes the city of Moose Jaw such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Well, uh, um, <laughs> you moose the microphone <laughs> Just closer. get closer and on in that case note, you say something. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, think, I think Moose Jaw is still one of the most unique cities in the province. Um, I think that we have many stories in Moose Jaw that, um, that attracts people to live there I still think we're we're trying to figure out our our how do we draw people with jobs and careers and that right however we have you know the region around us is agri-based and you know and and huge business in Saskatchewan right now with farming and agriculture always has been right but Moose Jaw is I, I still think it's safer than other communities however we're having our issues just like other communities right i right um i don't know i mean i've i've lived there all my life came back there after university right but i know lots of people that didn't so it's it's i don't know it's just got a uniqueness to it it's got a a charm to it that i think is attractive and and it is relatively safe you can send your kids off to school and let them walk and i still think it's okay right but i don't know that's a hard one because I think, I don't know, I think Saskatchewan is a great place right now, right? It I certainly think, is. You guys have been the most welcoming to me ever. Right? <laughs> like, I, I just honestly think, because, I because and now being at the SUMA convention, right? That's the other thing I've always brought here, being the rep from Moose Jaw, is it's not just about my city, it's about us as a province. Like how, so how can Moose Jaw work with Regina? How can Moose Jaw work with Karenport and Moss Bank and Assiniboy and all the communities around us, right? You know, like how can we come together and make our region strong and welcoming and, you know, so 
I don't know. It's yeah, Moose Jaw's the home of the snowbirds, man. It's the Canada's and most one of the, notorious cities. It, one of the biggest know, mooses in ever. That's right. It is the most. It's, it's the largest moose. It's, right? It is the it world's is the large? largest moose. Yep. Uh, yeah, it is. I, right? Last time yeah. I was in Moose Jaw, I was yeah. excited to take a photo with. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm pretty go, sure there was right? like a big moose and there was a baby moose right beside it, if I'm not mistaken, or yeah. close to it. So. Right. Thank exactly. you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you so much to our guests for joining us for this episode of the Cross Border Interviews. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce more high-quality content. Every little bit helps. We appreciate your support as well. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And if you can, please don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally... As much as we all love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking.